Looking back, my first real hi-fi amplifier was an integrated amplifier from NAD, the 320BEE to be exact. And I, I loved this amplifier, so much so that when I sold it in order to what I thought upgrade to something else, I ended up buying another one just a few months later because nothing seemed to possess the same magic of the 320BEE. But that that was years ago, and the BEE is no longer with me, and I haven't had an NAD integrated amplifier since. But that changes today, because we do have another integrated amplifier from NAD, this one not bearing the BEE designation, but one that still feels very familiar to me. So settle in, hit that like button, and subscribe as we review the NAD C338 Hybrid Digital DAC Amplifier. <laughs> The NAD C338 is an incredibly compact amplifier. It's not crazy powerful. It boasts 50 watts per channel into 8 or 4 ohms, but this being an NAD, you can likely take that power rating to the bank. It is a hybrid Class D design. This allows the amplifier to be very efficient, not to mention small in stature, but it's not limited to 50 watts per channel. It does have a dynamic power rating of 90 to 200 watts in short bursts. But what sets this amplifier apart from the competition isn't its power, but its functionality. More than just an integrated amplifier, the C338 is a very capable DAC. It also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Chromecast built-in, and Spotify Connect capability. It has a built-in moving magnet phono stage, several analog line level inputs, a dedicated headphone amplifier, not to mention a single subwoofer out. NED's industrial design has been one of the great constants in all of hi-fi. Their, their look hasn't so much evolved over the years as it has matured and just become a little bit more refined. And the C338 is pretty basic visually, but that's okay because it's a look that's not likely going to fall out of fashion in time. And while the materials are very utilitarian, the construction is first rate. Now, the volume knob and the included remote cheapen this particular design. The volume knob is borrowed from the T778 receiver and other NAD designs, whereas the remote, I have no idea what parts bin NAD dug that thing out of. Thankfully, there is an app for that. Yes, you can control the NAD using the NAD remote app. Now, the remote app is pretty basic, but it is supremely functional and very reliable, at least in my experience. Now, to set the NAD up on your home network, you're gonna use the Google Home app. Now, this app allows you to connect the NAD to the rest of your Google connected devices, and it can make it part of, say, a modern home distributed audio system. But of course, you can cast directly to the C338 itself because the presence of Google Chromecast built in elevates the NAD from being just another integrated amplifier and DAC solution. But enough about the C338's forward thinking. How does it sound? Well, I know a lot of you have some pretty strong feelings about Class D amplifiers, and I think NAD deserves a bit of credit here because the C338 sounds like a classic NAD design. To me, it doesn't sound like a Class D amplifier, nor is it a type of amplifier trying to convince me that I'm listening to tubes or Class A. No, it's just, it's just a proper NAD amplifier. The NAD sound isn't neutral. It definitely has a tone that favors the bass and low mid bass. And as a result, it can come across as being a little bit more richer or darker compared to other amplifiers. But what it is not is slow or vague. Historically, NADs have had great control over the bass notes and the C338 is no different. Bass out of this amplifier is taut, articulate, and very detailed. In most circumstances, it is free of resonance and instead very well dampened. What's the difference? Well, picture a kick drum with and without a blanket stuffed inside. Without a blanket, the kick drum sound is full of resonance. With a blanket, you get a very well controlled and dampened sound. And the NAD with respect to bass is more in the latter camp. If you need more bass, or at least the feeling of more bass, there is a bass boost button, and the boost accentuates the low frequencies by 6 dB. Now, 
I didn't use it that much, but it is noticeable and it can be a welcomed improvement if you have speakers that don't have a lot of bass on their own, say for instance, bookshelves like our Yamo S803s or the Dolly Oberon ones. It does have a positive effect in that circumstance. But the bass boost also seems to have a little bit of effect on mid-range, adding a bit of extra body to your favorite vocals. The mid-range is the closest to neutral compared to the rest of the NAD's frequency response. It doesn't impart a great deal of color to your favorite artist, but what it does have is a ton of inflection and detail, two things that I liked very much. In truth, with respect to detail retrieval, it more than held its own against costlier competition like my name Unity Atom or the Technics G30. I'm not saying that it's better, I'm just saying it wasn't embarrassed. High frequencies are definitely on the softer, rounder side of the spectrum. It's not that the NAD can't hit the high notes, it can, it just lacks a certain sheen or shimmer. And this means that it is very difficult for the NAD to sound aggressive, even at high volumes, but it also costs the amp some sonic contrast. Given that some of the focus of this amplifier is heavily placed on digital music, I don't mind that the high frequencies are just a little bit rolled off because this trait can benefit a lot of modern pop music like Panic at the Disco. But don't mistake rolled off for veiled or vague because the NAD still has good solid high frequency definition. This is not a forward or aggressive amplifier. Dynamics are good, just not explosive. Everything scales as you turn them up, but you're not going to excite this amplifier or get it to lose its composure that easily. Even when driving super efficient loudspeakers like the La Scala's, the NAD proved to just be a smooth operator. Now let's talk about soundstage because this is one of the key areas where I think you're gonna be able to tell a difference between the C338 and maybe more expensive components. For example, when using the Technics SLG700 SACD player and streamer connected to the NAD using its line level inputs, that's relying on the Technics internal DAC, the soundstage was very full, very well appointed, detailed, and incredibly natural. Now, when using that same player, but going from the Technics into the built-in DAC on the NAD, all of the detail was still present, or 99% of the detail was still present, but some of that scale in fullness was lost. I still enjoy the built-in DAC of the NAD very much, but it is an example of how a costlier or better DAC will give you a different soundstage performance out of the NAD. And while I'm on the topic of associated equipment, the built-in moving magnet phono stage is good, but maybe not great. If you are just getting into vinyl and maybe your rig is on the more entry level or affordable side, I don't think there's gonna be much that you're gonna to have to complain about with respect to the built-in phono stage. But if you have a mid-fi or high-end turntable rig and are getting into cartridges like the 2M Black, I think you're gonna find the NAD's phono stage to be just a little bit constrained, if not just a touch noisy. So entry level products don't seem to have the resolving power to bring these kinds of little idiosyncrasies about the NAD to light. But as you move up the chain and you get more resolving gear, I think you're gonna find, you're gonna find some of the shortcomings of the NAD's built-in phono preamp. Additionally, the NAD's built-in headphone amplifier is pretty good. It had no problems driving my Andover Audio PM50 planar headphones, and in direct comparison to the built-in headphone amp on the Technics SLG700, the NAD held its own. It even managed to impart a little bit of warmth to the presentation compared to the Technics' more detailed and analytical one. Using other headphones like our Leica Edition Master Dynamics, the difference between the two headphone amps became even more subtle and less apparent. So if you're serious about headphones, I doubt you're gonna be relying on the headphone amp inside a C338, but if you're a casual listener like I am, it's fine. I have only a few gripes about the NAD. The first is a certain lack of customization. There are no tone or balance controls that I can find, and that's after reading all 16 pages of the manual and poring over the app in search of these things, which for some of you may be a deal breaker. 
Next, for being an integrated amplifier aimed at a more digital savvy consumer, there are certain inputs missing that you may find useful, inputs such as USB and HDMI. Lastly, with less efficient loudspeakers, you may be finding that you're having to turn the NAD up a little bit more than what you're used to in order to reach engaging levels. Not to worry, the NAD was able to power every loudspeaker that we had in-house comfortably and without strain. It just, it might have taken a little bit more volume. For the money, NAD is packing quite a bit of functionality into the C338, allowing it to hang with costlier competition like the name Unity Atom or Technics G30. Where the NAD comes up short is in sound and build quality, where it just can't quite compete. A more appropriate comparison would have to be made with the Leak Stereo 130, Cyrus 1 Cast, or the CXA series from Cambridge, all three of which are more expensive and yet still comparable to the NAD. Now the leak gives up a little bit of power to the NAD, but it has a far more lively and dynamic sound, whereas the Cyrus in Cambridge amplifiers are more NAD-like in that they're a little bit rolled off, controlled, and fuller in the bass and mid-range departments. Now I don't think that the NAD is as stylish as the leak, but it is far more user-friendly than the Cyrus, and it gives up just a little bit of power in exchange for features set when compared to the CXA series from Cambridge. And among NAD's own stable mates, there is the equally powerful but less expensive C328, which costs $100 less, but you do lose Wi-Fi and Chromecast in order to hit that price point. Or you can step up to the C368 for more power, more features, a preamp output, things like that, as well as NAD's modular design construction, which gives you a measure of upgradability down the road for things like Blue OS or HDMI switching. The NAD C338 is just another great integrated amplifier from a brand known for making some pretty good integrated amplifiers. Except unlike the NADs that I cut my teeth on back in the day, this one has almost all of the connectivity one could want in today's digital music marketplace. I'm not sure if it's the perfect NAD integrated for me and my ever-changing needs as a reviewer. I think maybe stepping up to the C368 might be a better fit, but I very much enjoyed my time with this one. And it took no time at all for me to fall back in love with NAD's approach to sound because this really is an integrated amplifier that keeps your focus on what matters most and that is the music. So for some of you, I have no doubt that the NAD C338 is going to be a perfect fit. So that's it. That is my review of the NAD C338 hybrid digital DAC amplifier. What did, what did you think of this piece? It's really difficult to describe an amplifier. I, I honestly don't know how you do it. What What's difficult for you? Like, to you, do they all start to sound? Well, I mean, you can't say that they all start start to sound the same because there are definitely amplifiers that we have had in this house that you really respond to. So you didn't necessarily react that viscerally to this, but it didn't bother you either. Right. I mean, there are there have been some receivers or integrateds that I have definitely definitely like not liked. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm like, yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a few where I can really, really tell the impact that they make mm -hmm. on the sound that you get out of a speaker. For example, the Technics. Um, uh, the G700. Paired with the, the Technics speaker. Yeah. Amazing pairing. And, you know, you just really don't, you don't, you. It's hard to, it's hard to beat that. Yeah. Sorry. I'm getting tongue twisted over here, but. Um, those, when you compare it with the, when you match those together, there's a definite like difference in the sound quality. Mm -hmm. Whereas you put the Technic speakers on something else or vice versa, you put that amp on something else. It's still good, but it's not, it doesn't have the same magic. Okay. This particular amplifier I found to be just very good. Nothing like that blew me out of the water, but it also didn't make me want to throw it against the wall either, you know, yeah. so that's a good thing. Did you find that it paired pretty nicely with pretty much anything we connected to it? There wasn't, I didn't oh, yeah. feel like there was a pairing where I was just like, oh, don't do that. 
no, it's it's one of those very non-offensive yeah. type of amplifiers. So it sort of keeps to itself in a way. Like yeah. it doesn't, you know, it's not overly one way or the other. So it just sort of worked. It which, is what it is. Which I guess is really all you can ask of something. Yeah. Um, I think the dial, the, the volume, the volume dial, dial yeah. sucks. What I don't like is it does turn in like half decibel increments. So I agree with you. You're like, yeah, you're like, come on, yeah, let's get like, there I don't already. Really have time for this. Yeah, and it's <laughs> yeah first world problems, which or also sucks because if you're listening really loud and like the phone rings or like I'm doing a demo, I'm I'm listening demoing and you're in the other room and you talk, and I forgot where I put the remote. You're like, I'll be right with you, you know, as yeah, you turn it down. A, is there a mute? There's not not on the front. There's no mute button. Is there a mute on the? Yes, there's the, a mute on the on the, on the remote. remote. Yes, okay. there is. I guess back to the original sort of start of this section of the conversation mm-hmm. and, and how difficult it is to really um, analyze or, or, or qualify an amplifier kind of is dependent upon what it's paired with. Yeah, for and sure. And at that point, it becomes system building and, you know... There's just so much that can go that can affect the sound of one component over another. Just like you talked about in the review, like how you know you can connect it to the G30. Oh, the better um, DAC inside the. the, You know, so I mean, you're really just gonna have to kind of play with it. But I think for the price point, it's a pretty good buy because when you look at the cost of the other amplifiers and what we kind of determined were the comparison most apples to apples yeah they are a good three to i want to say five hundred dollars more expensive than oh yeah this particular amp yeah so when you look at it from that perspective it's pretty good and i i can't think of a ton of integrateds that fall in this like sort of i would say under a thousand but over five hundred dollar price point, it, it doesn't seem like there's a, a, there's a not wide a, market. There's not a ton. NAD definitely owns that market. Um, I just think that much like the three twenty BEE that I had back in the day, I just think that NAD understands like how to build a system for less. And by less, I don't ne- necessarily mean always less money, but just less fuss. You know, like. I think you can totally get away with a C338 and a pair of speakers. And if you have like a U-turn orbit turntable, like you're done, you're done. And maybe you're 1500 bucks all in or $2,000 all in, but it's still very respectable. Cause like, like I said in the review, like is there a difference between say a $4,000 uh, CD player streamer DAC, like the Technics and the C338. Of course there is. There is a difference. And I would venture to say that anyone could hear it. But I do think that there's probably 95% of people that would hear a difference would look at an extra 3,400 bucks and go, I don't need that difference that much. In which case, the, the NAD becomes a great value. Oh, totally. It becomes an amazing value. And that's really... That's really what impressed me most about this is it it gets so much right that at 700 bucks, 699, you're immediately into nitpicking land to spend more. Right, right. And, and you have to really think about well, what are your priorities. All right. Well, like I said, that is our review of the C338 from NAD. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you guys is this. Are you enjoying NAD's new hybrid digital amplifier direction, or do you prefer their more classic AB designs? Sound off down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you used any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you all very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that's it. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.
the last time you wore it, somebody commented. One person, yeah. John. John John probably commented. Freaking John John. <laughs> he's he, he's he's probably still commenting it's, and doesn't know what it is. Like, I'm gonna what? I'm gonna tell him what time it is. <laughs> Meanwhile everyone's just like it's quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's probably half of the internet. Just people like, Bruh! and the rest of us are all like, "Do you feel something?" Man, it must be the wind. All right. <laughs>